Well, hey everybody, it's me again. Uh, and just want to say thank you. Thank you for taking the time to watch these videos, ever how you do it. Uh, we really appreciate you giving to us your valuable time and, and taking a moment to just uh, share a thought with us. Again, we're not so much here to give you a bunch of how-tos. I love a title of a book that came out several years ago that said, if how-tos were enough, we'd all be skinny, rich, and happy. It really is about thinking God's thoughts after him and pursuing his design for our life and our family. So that's what we're all about. And we just enjoy uh, bringing these thoughts to you via videos and our newsletter and Facebook posts and, and conversations over, over every form of media we can get our hands on. Our favorite is a cup of coffee and a face-to-face -face when we can all be together. Uh, and so until we can have that time, this will be the best we can do. Uh, and so I just want to continue kind of laying out some thoughts on how do we counter busyness? How do we go against this really frenetic pace, this high energy schedule field pace of our culture? How do we kind of push against that a little bit and pursue God's design? If you will, in our imaginations, let's, let's go back to the beginning. You know, when God created mankind, when he made Adam and Eve, he created a perfect garden for them and he placed them in it. Now, for some time I had asked myself the question, why did God make Adam and Eve last? Why were they the last thing he created? And, and here's the thoughts that I felt the Holy Spirit inspired in me is because he wanted them to start their life in a place of rest. Now imagine with me, it's day six, right? As we read the story, you know, evening and morning for six days, God is doing something. He comes to the sixth day and he spends that day making mankind so that when mankind for the first time wakes up and God breathes that breath of life into him and he opens his eyes, he opens his eyes up on a day we church people call the Sabbath, which means a day of rest. He opens his eyes up, if you will, on Sunday. He wakes up and God is at rest from his work. He looks around, the garden and creation are finished. They're perfect, they're in full operation. You know, if he's hungry, he's just gotta go pick fruit off a tree. Everything is prepared for him. And I really think God was setting up a stage for us to think we live our life from a place of rest. Every one of us are to be working from a place of rest, living in a place where we know God has got everything covered and he has taken care of us. You know, as Selena and I have talked over this thought for probably the last few years, this is, this is what kind of keeps getting condensed down that the principle of Sabbath or again, the principle of rest is really a principle of saying, it's enough. I think that's what God was trying to tell his people at the beginning when he said, hey, every seventh day you're to do no work. You're to say, what I have done is enough. It's sufficient. And God will take care of everything else. You know, all throughout the Bible, we see that God gives us a command to work and to work hard. And he says, we're to go out and we're to work six days a week. We're to put our hand to something for six days and we're to regularly take a break and say, it's enough. You know, I think not only can we do that weekly and please hear me, I know I, might, I get some comments. I'm not talking about legalism. I'm not talking about going back under a law and if you work on Sunday, you've committed some sin. Please, please hear me. I'm talking about a thought principle of resting on purpose and out loud declaring, God, what I have done is enough and my trust is in you. You will make up the rest. You know, not only can I think we do that, we can do that weekly, I think we should do that daily. That we should go out and we could put our hands to whatever it is we're doing. You know, right now in my life, as I'm recording this, uh, I help pastor here at our church. Uh, I run a handyman business uh, and I am a real, real part-time real estate agent, right? So I am putting my hand to work all the time, but I'm determining that every day I will say it's enough. What I have done is sufficient. 
God is my source. He's the one who provides for me. And I'm going to go home and enjoy my family. I'm going to rest now. It's enough. You know, as Selena does what she does at home through this, uh, this blog and newsletter and homeschooling our kids and all the things she's got her hands to, we're constantly, I'm trying to constantly encourage her and say, honey, it's enough. What you have done is sufficient. Because if not, it's real easy for us to always think just a little bit more, just a little bit more. You know, I remember hearing a quote, I believe it was one of the Rockefellers, I think the, the guy that started it all for that family, and a reporter of his day asked him, Mr. Rockefeller, how much money is enough? And his answer to that guy was, just a little bit more. You know, I think we do that as well with uh, accomplishment, with time, with doing stuff. If we're not careful, People will say, well, Brad, how, how much is enough? How much time do you need to be spending at the church? And if I'm not careful, I'll say, well, man, just, just a little bit more. When there needs to come a time, again, every day, regularly, that I stop and I say, you know what? It's sufficient. I have worked. I have put my hand to what God has given me. With all of my energy and effort, I've been a good manager of my time and my resources and what I have, my opportunities but now I'm going to stop at the end of the day, at the end of a week, you know, regularly throughout the year, through vacations or other times, and I'm going to stop and on purpose say, you know what, God, it's enough. You've provided for us. You've made a way for us. You are the one who takes care of us. And I say it's sufficient because, guys, again, we sing songs and we have thoughts that God is our portion and if God is my portion, why do I need to take home a doggy bag, right? Man, I love having these conversations with you. Again, we look forward to connecting with you on the newsletter. Uh, again, if this is in any way helpful or beneficial to you, please share it with some folks. Uh, send it out. There's no copyrights. There's none of this. We try to do all of this just free of charge just to, to get things out there. Uh, all we ask in return is, is that if they'd like to, please send us their email. Uh, we'd love to just add them to the newsletter list and just build a relationship with all those that God brings into our life. So, man, we'll talk to you again real soon. And thank you again for your time.